guys what's going on so we are back in the garage today we've got a few updates with the front end of the truck it's quite messy in here right now don't even know what's going on but <clears throat> got some updates for the front end here so I'm gonna break it all down for you guys go over what parts we've used what we had to do to make everything work up front here for this and yeah let's get into it so for this truck for the steering linkage and whatnot I actually ditched the factory steering linkage here and what I went with was a kit from Little Shop of Horrors they call it their S10 no tow steering kit so this kit right here comes such that you need to reuse your factory idler arm and you also need to reuse the factory S10 uh, steering pitman arm so those are the factory pieces the rest of it you can see the crossbar here they've got heim joints with adjusters all that came with the kit uh, just ignore the nuts that are on here right now I did not put the nylon lock nuts on I just went with just some regular nuts for ease of putting it together and taking it apart as I need to <clears throat> I chose to go with the black powder coated kit it was in stock shipped got within three days the powder coating looks really nice on this kit <clears throat> so I'm kind of glad I went with this the main reason I went with this kit over just using the factory stuff was the fact that this kit allows you to bag your ride and maintain just a regular straight steering linkage as opposed to you know the notched ones that a lot of people use so this kit comes with straight tie rods as opposed to some of the other kits like you know Michigan Metalworks they have what they call the no notch tie rods where you don't have to notch the frame they actually make their tie rods so they're basically just a big big curve in them which makes it a real pain for doing uh, alignment and stuff like that so I didn't really want to go with that so I actually found this kit here I sent them a quick message to ask them they said they had it in stock so I ordered it right away and got it within like three or four days the nice part about this kit then also is the fact that they say that it will clear the frame without you having to notch the frame at all up here on up to a 27 inch tire so lucky for me, the tire that I chose and that I'm going to go with is 26.7 inches. So I've actually had the spindle and all that. Right now it's not, but I had it at the center point of the wheel all the way up and it does actually clear. So we're good with that. So that's pretty much the reason I went with this steering setup. Uh, next we can talk about, since we're already here, drop spindles. So these drop spindles right here are the Belltech two inch drop spindle for the S10 pickup truck. As you can see, they're brand new. Unfortunately, I'm actually going to be cutting them and getting them re-powder coated most likely. So these ears get cut off here. <clears throat> I actually have another one right here. This is a factory S10. So you can see what gets done on this. You cut the ears off on the side here, and then you're basically drilling, tapping. And I have a bracket that I made. There's actually a YouTube video on how to do this, so I followed their information. And then this allows you to run a Camaro brake setup on the S10. So basically, you get bigger brakes, bigger rotors, all around better stopping power, which I figure I would probably need for this 12 valve Cummins. So basically, that's what we're doing for. The drop spindle, like I said, Belltech two inch drop spindle. <clears throat> if you want the part number, there you go, Belltech 2100. Uh, next on the list, we'll talk about the arms. I don't have the upper arms on right now. I actually took them back off, but you can see the lower arms down here. <clears throat> These are Michigan Metalworks, <clears throat> and they're just their S10 Jeebus joint arm setup. So I went with this kit basically because of the fact that everyone else 
had very long lead times. I looked at Thor Bros. A lot of people recommend those. They had, they basically couldn't even tell me a lead time. Michigan Middle Works when I ordered them, they ended up being a 16 week lead time and they stuck completely true to the deadline. I got them 16 weeks after the day I ordered them. So something like that, a bit of a pain, but as long as you plan it out ahead of time, order your parts, not a big deal. <clears throat> So the arms, they work good. The upper arms, I've got boxed away for now so they don't get scratched. Uh, we can talk about the shock mounts next. So with the kit, this is what Michigan Metalworks sends you for your shock mounts. This is like a generic setup that a lot of you know, other companies send or people do for their shock mounts on these, these builds. As you can see, minor leg on the table, shocks are on, I did not use these. If you ask me, these things are garbage. That's where they belong. I'm not running those. So what I did for the shock mount on this, I used the lower bolt hole that Michigan Metalworks puts in their lower arm to mount the shock. <clears throat> and then I actually built my own custom upper shock mounts. So you can see own custom design. They are mounted at a slight angle, which they always mount like this, regardless of using this kit or using the Michigan Metalworks arm that they provide or bracket that they provide. They would still mount at an angle. So I chose to just make my own setup, make it unique, make it something I really like. So you can see the different angles here. <clears throat> and then on the inside, we got it. Just a couple of holes drilled out, make it look cool. <clears throat> And they're all just TIG welded on there, TIG welded on, TIG welded together. Just some extra gussets on the inside there for extra support. Just to make sure that, you know, lifting all that weight, they're not going to want to bend backwards or anything like that. <clears throat> the shocks that I went with, these are actually, I believe they're a Dodge Durango shock. So I'll, I'll throw the part number up for all this stuff, but the part number is actually on these shocks right here. PS55388. So there you go. These were not expensive. They're actually a shorter shock, which is perfect for this build. For the up and down movement, I didn't really need a whole lot of shock travel. So these ones fit perfect. I picked out the shocks first. Basically, kind of figure out what I wanted height wise or what was going to happen for height of the shock, travel, and all that. And then that's when I built the bracket afterwards. And these are actually mounted or welded on. This right here is about a 72 degree angle. So that's kind of what I went with. Basically trial and error a whole bunch of different times, making some template brackets, tag it on, put the shock in, test it, doesn't work, reform it, and repeat until we got what we wanted. So that's that for the shock. <clears throat> uh, next up we can talk airbags. A little hard to see them, but uh, these bags are Okay, cool. That just ain't gonna stay. These are Airlift Dominator D2600 bags. I went with these just because I wanted something that had a decent amount of lift and would be able to support all the weight of the motor. So once again, 12 valve Cummins. They're not very light. A lot of people, you know, you find a lot of information on the internet. People say they'll fit. People say they won't fit. Check it out. They're, they're definitely in there. S10 frame. They're in there. The only thing you gotta do is notch Notch the spring cups out. I actually need to do a little bit more on mine yet if you take a peek It's not quite rubbing right there yet, but airing up and down they just touch on the outside The inside also needs a little bit more Let's See if I can get in there Basically you gotta take it all the way back to that pinch weld grind all the way down and then I'm just gonna re-weld that line back up so the frames I got split apart. This right here, I'm probably gonna take it all the way up to this weld line right here. So it's gonna just have to come all the way up to there for them to clear perfectly. So that's pretty much the setup for the front. <clears throat> I don't have the upper arms on, like I said, I didn't want to scratch them. The upper arms actually just bolt on here. I got their whole bracket that goes across, arm slides on use around it's just right on there nice these have their what they call a jeebus upper joint these are utilizing the factory s10 lower ball joints uh 
uh, like I said, the steering linkage, little shop of horrors, so those all have times on them, fully adjustable. They actually have this basically extender bracket, and that's how they get away with being able to drop it all the way down and clear the frame. So that's the setup for the front end right now. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment below. Like the video, subscribe. That way you can see what else is to come. Uh, just real quick, I did go ahead and throw a X brace in there, so that's fully welded in. I just gotta weld the bottom side, but other than that, that's welded in there. Add a little bit more strength to the frame. Uh, cab's back on, setting on its little little mounts for now. Not sure what we're gonna work on today. Maybe, maybe put the motor back in. Gotta slide the cab back up so we can figure out where all that's gonna line up. Figure out drive shaft stuff. You know where that's gonna hit. If it's gonna be in the way of the X brace, I sure hope not because it's already in there. Should be close. Need to figure out a drive shaft loop. I'll probably just mount one somewhere. Hopefully off the front of that X, I can build a drive shaft loop for the front end. Slide the cab forward, start working on a floor or something, probably tack the cab to the frame so it's not going to wiggle around anymore. And basically that's going to be it for this video, I think. I might throw up some extra just B-roll footage so you guys can get some cool cool angles and shots. I got to pull that bag out on the other side over here, uh, passenger side. When I welded this one up, this shock mount, I actually had the airline like the driver's side coming out through this hole in the frame and it melted clean off inside the frame so now i gotta pull that bag back out take that line off put a new line on run out through the frame and that way as i'm doing stuff i could use the bags to air the front end up and down to make sure everything's working all right i already have i did it before i welded on the shock mounts they were just tacked on there and everything seemed great so no worries with that in case you're curious Clearance is pretty tight on here. They actually send instructions with their kit. And you can look at their instructions online. They say that if it's very close based off what your wheels are, you can throw some spacers in there. I think they even give you a McMaster car part number you can use to space out so you don't hit anything. Oh yeah, one thing I didn't say with these S10 uh, Michigan Metalworks arms, they actually move the wheel, I believe it's a half inch forward and a half inch in or out from the factory. I'm not sure. I'll I'll double check that and throw a throw up some words on the screen for that. But yeah, I like the arms. They're not bad. The lead time just wasn't great. They kind of screwed me when they sent me the arms. I didn't get any bushings. I requested the lower arms to be not painted because I had an intention of trying to do a sway bar setup on this, so I would have to weld to the lower arms. So because of that, they didn't install the bushings and they forgot to send them. I basically wait another four to five weeks for the bushings. Not super happy about that. Michigan Metal Works basically just stopped responding to me. You know, I kept emailing them asking where they are, and they just kept telling me they're on back order. So sometimes customer service isn't great, but I like their product. I'll go with it. I recommend it if anyone's looking for it. <clears throat> Highly recommend it. The bag does sit a little bit towards the front of the plate. You know, you've got all that extra room in the back side. I don't really know why it's like that, but the bag sits on the plate. It's not off, so that's it for now. Like I said, guys, any questions or comments, drop them below. Hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the videos, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.
actually guys one more thing before we go almost forgot very important <clears throat> when you're running one of these bag setups most people don't tell you what you need to run for a bag cup for this kit i'm running no lower bag cup but i am running an upper bag cut cup cut cup upper bag cup i did have to cut it down the brand that i went with is a company called infamous metal i might have a sticker somewhere i don't know everyone loves stickers well no idea where it is anyway upper bag cups the company is infamous metal i believe it's n and then famous no one else really tells you half time what they cut them down to this is what's left of mine <clears throat> originally i was going to cut off a half of an inch don't read that, that is wrong. I actually cut off an inch and a half. So my bag cups, the total height from the bottom of the plate of the bag cup to the top of the bag cup ended up being an inch and a half. And that right there gave me the perfect lift and the perfect ride height. So right now my frame is setting at what my normal ride height would be, six inches off the ground or just under six inches. So with that size bag cup, my suspension, when it's at ride height, the bag is within the ideal use range. So you gotta look those specs up. So Domineer has it listed on their site. I believe it's between six and nine inches is ideal usage conditions for the bag to ride at. So basically I set the control arm where it needed to be such that my spindle would be at the actual center of the wheel at ride height. <clears throat> and then I measured from the lower plate up to the inside where the bag cup sits. And I got some measurements on the outside and the inside. So that right there allowed me to figure out what I should cut the bag cup down to. These come in normally, I think three inches tall. I cut mine down to one inch and a half. There you go, cut it down. I cut an inch and a half off of the upper bag cup for my application. Everyone else, you know, your application might be different. Make sure you measure and make sure your bags are within the ideal range at ride height. That's the trick to having a good ride with these bag trucks, bag cars, whatever. And also you wanna run some actual struts on these as well to help smooth out the ride. All right, that's actually it guys. Have a good one. We'll talk to you then.